Hey, I'm Alex, and this is my appreciation of Dario Argento's Tenebrae. Dario Argento makes sure you and I have a good time as long as this murder mystery is unraveling on screen. Yes, there are moments of stylistic excesses and there are moments where you can say, okay, Dario Argento is indulging in being the auteur, but they're subjugated to a very strong narrative drive and, and ultimately it's all about us being involved and unraveling the mystery together with the characters. And this is great cinema, this is great filmmaking. Argento uses every trick he knows to make sure that we keep watching and that we are engaged in the story with the protagonist. It's a rare example of a giallo where the murder investigation is not completely sidelined, like for example in quite a popular giallo, uh, Four Flies on Grey Velvet, the protagonist completely delegates the investigation. He never investigates himself. He hires a sleuth, he hires a couple of bums to be his bodyguard, but he never actually in, uh, investigates much. And then there are other thrillers in this vein where a lot of the investigation is the police procedural, which can, which can be extremely dull and just works as padding. Whereas here with Tenebrae we have a good grounded uh, figure to root for, who we can sort of associate with and through their eyes we can navigate this world and get closer to the root of the enigma and to unravel the mystery at a very high price and with a lot of bloodshed along the way. The opening scene actually is in New York City and we see that bridge, we see the main character arrive on bicycle at JFK airport and he's cycling along this bridge so you see those metal ribs and then you see Manhattan in the background and you could have expected a smash cut to Rome or some kind of a you know a deliberate contrast between this kind of steel concrete grayness of New York and then show the sort of the ancient monuments in Rome but nothing of the sort takes place. There is quite a smooth transition. Rome appears almost as an extension of New York somehow. It's like a European suburb of New York which is uh, quite sparsely populated somehow but has this uh, a lot of brutalist buildings on display and a lot of concrete again and some quite anonymous streets and side streets are shown which could be pretty much anywhere which makes it kind of again anonymous yet fascinating because there is this very distinct sound track which you could never mistake music from Tenebrae for any other film because it has a very distinct uh, sound to it. Not just music but the sort of just the sounds, the, the oral sort of ambience, it's, it's really fantastic. Just play, 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 play the soundtrack. It's on YouTube, it's everywhere. Play the Tenebrae theme song and it's immediately, it puts you in that atmosphere, in that odd, cold, brightly lit environment where, you know, you could lose your, you know, life at any, any moment and there is nobody there to look out for you because everybody is in a way involved in this, uh, you know, in this death murder mystery. So you have this room which appears quite cold and empty and sort of lacking the traditional Italianness. So you don't really see a lot of really, uh, the, you know, the kind of characters that populated Argento's first uh, three thrillers, those kind of, you know, barbers and postmen and things like that. They were like sort of exaggerated, you know, common people maybe you could say. Whereas here in Tenebrae it's a lot more international and yes, you do have like uh, 
Maria, played by uh, Lara Vendel and so and Gianni they're like okay so they're Italians but it's all played down a little bit there you know they're young and they are very much like uh, part of this somehow international uh, set of characters so they don't you know there is never that person speaking in a dialect that would have been in an earlier Gento film would have been uh, right at home there so we have moved on from that to a kind of more anonymous sort of I guess slightly globalized uh, vision of Rome as just a huge city where um, empathy isn't really very much uh, available where you are anonymous and you're alienated which brings us to this Antonionian um, aspect of Argento cinema. I would like to say that Tenebre is uh, is a perfect blend of uh, Antonioni's exploration of alienation and sexuality within the urban uh, context, as seen in his wonderful film Le Clisse, and with Argento's more commercial brand of a thrilling cinema of cinema where there is uh, a definite uh, entertainment value and there is a definite engagement with the viewer and the needs to tell a gripping story with the viewer's entertainment at heart and I think there are moments in Argento's previous films where he's trying to bring that uh, Antonionian sensibility across such as maybe uh, some bits of Deep Red where it doesn't quite blend quite as successfully as it does here, which again makes Tenebre such a prime example of uh, of Argento working at the peak of his uh, powers. Tenebre is very carefully color-coded. There is these blues, there is these grays and lots of white and some nice pastel colors as well. So a very distinct look, very distinct sound. The care put into this, I mean, this film just with the sound off, without following, being able to follow the plot, just watching the visuals is already gives you massive pleasure, but there is also a story to match the visuals, which isn't always the case with Italian thrillers, but here there is style to burn and there is a story which is powerful and keeps on progressing right to the very end and packs quite a wallop at the finale but I'm not spoiling anything in this uh, appreciation I just share my uh, my opinion of Tenebrae a film I've seen a lot of times a, a film I've seen many times and which keeps uh, giving each time I watch it, I find something there to enjoy. And these characters, it's as if they were living in this uh, in this permanent TV show where there is lights just out of shot all the time, lighting them from each side. So there is that even lighting spread out. They're very, very well exposed and they're very smartly dressed for the most part. Even when they're alone in the intimacy of their homes, their flats, their villas, some luxurious villas in Tenebrae, you still have the feeling that the characters still, they still have a ton of makeup on and they're very presentable, you know, so uh, there is that highly stylized aspect to everything, which isn't limited to just Tenebrae, it's most Argento films, but Tenebrae is an extreme example of that uh, sty stylization, I'd say. And the maniac, the killer, has seemingly absolutely no trouble entering those private uh, private homes. He's just there. We do see once uh, briefly how the killer's gloved hand um, holding the razor blade is cutting through the um, I think it's like some kind of Venetian blinds or something like some kind of outside uh, this is cutting through to get uh, to get inside through the window but mainly the, the killer just enters we don't we're not shown the technicalities it's not important how he does it it's just you know 
anywhere you go, you, you know, death could strike you. And there is plenty of death in Tenebrae. At least two of the victims are shown inhabiting quite luxurious villas, which are far away from uh, Rome's historic center. These are, those were ultra-modern uh, villas back when uh, Tenebrae was made around 1981-1982. And if you look on the map of Rome, you'll see that the uh, locations where the film was shot, they're scattered all over the city. Not, this, not the historic center, but, you know, some are, some are in the north, west, like uh, Cristiano Berti's uh, villa. And some are in the south, in the Casal Palocco area, which is a marvelous, uh, green, uh, splendid, uh, legendary uh, neighborhood of, of Rome, which uh, is quite a desirable place to live, actually, if you have your own car, because it's not very well connected with public transport, unfortunately. So yeah, if you wanted to go on a location tour of Tenebra, you'd have to be prepared. Those are not bunched together. Uh, Argento and his production team, they pieced that ultra-modern, brutalist Rome by hand-picking locations from all over. Some of them are quite on the outskirts of the city to compose them in editing, to, to create this uh, feeling of a city which is a lot more modern and anonymous than, uh, than Rome is in actual reality. Rome is a fantastic place, but it's very different from Tenebrae's Rome. So, so, so Tenebrae is a unique opportunity to see the Rome which doesn't actually exist. It's some kind of a magic place conjured up just for that one film, which Argento never tried to revisit that ambience in any of his other films ever again, which makes it very special. Dario Argento was about 41, 42 years old uh, as he began work on Tenebrae, and he was already a father of two by then, and had an extremely good run of films up to that point. He was just coming off Inferno, which is his best supernatural film, in my opinion, but which wasn't such a big uh, commercial success, unfortunately. And the production had been challenging and draining in many ways for Argento, so he chose to follow up Inferno with, uh, with, with the giallo. He decided to revisit his roots to create an, a new Italian thriller, but step it up in many ways. So Tenebra is like a turbo giallo with uh, a lot of aspects of previous films amped up to five, you know, or to 25 in some cases, including violence, including super twisted intrigue, including some highly aesthetized um, ambience, uh, you know, set pieces. It's quite an achievement, quite an achievement, and in many ways it's Argento's most successful uh, thriller and most representative, and made just at the right time as the Italian industry was about to completely collapse and it would be difficult even for Argento to secure big financing for their uh, projects in Italy. I think with Tenebrae, Argento successfully married the kind of uh, odd atmosphere of urban alienation and exploration of urban loneliness and poetics of empty spaces which originated with Michelangelo Antonioni and Argento successfully blended that with his own very particular brand of thrills murder set pieces, suspense and surprise storytelling which made his name. So Tenebrae is a great, great example of getting the best of both worlds, which makes it definitely worth seeing. I'm not done yet, I have plenty more enthusiasm for Tenebrae, so please keep watching. It's like Antonioni's Le Clisse, but transposed into 1980s in color with full-on violence and a murder mystery 
plot twists and revelations and surprises, but with the visual aesthetic worthy of a challenging art house film. I think Tenebrae contains some of the most violent uh, and most distressing scenes in all of Dario Argento's uh, career. For me, it's the dog attack scene that's the most uh, cruel and hard to watch because it's so believable. It's something that I can totally imagine happening. Imagine you being alone in an, in an unfamiliar street somewhere on the outskirts of a large city and there is nobody around to help you and then this huge huge dog starts chasing you i mean this is a nightmare scenario isn't it and in uh, tenebrae this scene there is a large scary looking black doberman chasing a young girl through the streets through the suburban streets at night that scene is shot so brilliantly. There are so many shots with the dog where obviously it's a trained animal. So it must have been a nightmare to wrangle the dog because there is even some, the camera sort of, uh, maybe it's on a jib going slightly from, uh, you know, kind of descending as the dog charges towards it. So imagine if they had to light the scene. It's like a night exterior shot. So they had to line up lots of light to even just uh, light that quite large chunk of street and then the, the dog has to be wrangled and then the camera they had to obviously make sure it's all sharp and focused and then move the camera which i think it's unusual for in animal scenes to have also elaborate camera moves but the dog attack scene is not just um, technically brilliant but it's also very very scary i find it's not very important narratively in the film. I mean, it, its purpose is mainly to get that character from one location to another where yet another character will then enter. I don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say narratively it's relatively, uh, relatively of limited uh, importance within the greater arc of the film. But if you were to trim them out the film, Tenebrae, Tenebrae would lose so much. It's something uh, quite uh, recurrent in Argento's thrillers, I find, is that there is some kind of an entity, not necessarily the main culprit, but some kind of a dangerous entity coming after the main character sometime, or coming after one of the characters sometime in the middle of the film, like in in Bird with Crystal Plumage, there is that hitman wearing at this very intense yellow jacket who comes after the main character Sam and then later the boxer kind of more or less disappears from the story I mean he he does come back very briefly and then he's not been central to the mystery and the same is here with the Doberman in Tenebra the Doberman is there to create an incredible tense scene and yes push the story notch forward but it's, it's, it's about making just thriller into an Argento thriller where terror awaits. Again, later on, for example, in, uh, later on in Argento's career in Do You Like Hitchcock, there is a scene where this big, bold, brutish man chases the skinny, wounded uh, main character who is not very manly, who couldn't stand up for himself in the fight with that big, brutish man, obviously. He chases him doggedly through the rain and it looks like he's about to get him and crush the main character and that scene again this uh, this guy chasing the protagonist he's not the main culprit he's not the maniac killer but he's there to intensify to bring that more thrills into the otherwise more typical hedonic structure and this is where i think argento is genius he's always when plotting his films he recognizes that just the hedonic plot in itself Yes, a giallo is basically any old mystery story, but a giallo italiana is something different. It's, it's where style and suspense and the bravura can take over just the ABC storytelling. And this is what, what this, this kind of sequences serve. They bring you onto a sensual level and bring you deeper into this universe of anxiety. And you forget for a moment the you know, the linear plot of, okay, unraveling 
you know, the mystery gathering clues and all that. So this is why Argento, when he's at his best, he's like amazingly good. Yeah, he's the best. This dog attack scene is just, for me, I find it quite terrifying. But there is dozens of scenes in Tenebrae where you could say, oh, this is brilliant technically and it's just f so packed with amazing stuff. I'm, I'm sure each viewer has their own uh, favorite bit depending on maybe there is a whole array of murders on display and suspense scenes and just moments where the technical brilliance just is just blinding blinding so if you are not yet convinced that tenebra is worth a watch well keep watching i'll tell you even more <laughs> more reasons to go and watch tenebra right now I remember that the first couple of times I saw Tenebrae, I was so overwhelmed by individual set pieces and some particularly strong scenes or particularly impressive scenes that I was oblivious to the main story. I, I could barely follow it, I could barely make sense of, you know, why, what and where. I, it was just more of a sensual overload than anything else watching Tenebrae. And it took me several viewings to get past that, to get past the sensational outer core, which is, you know, the, the blood and the sharks and the twists, towards the story that the film tells. Because there is a story and it's a, it's a little miracle as well. As far as constructing thrillers and whodunits goes, Tenebrae is a pretty, pretty damn good story and a well-told one, carefully constructed and presented through the eyes of characters we do care about, which is, again, not always the case in Argento's film, but Tenebrae, yes, definitely is one of the best examples of that. Tenebrae definitely, definitely warrants repeat viewings. I can't tell you how many times I've seen it. I literally, I've lost count. And you watch it again and again, you, you watch past the violence, you watch past that Luma crane shot around the villa you watch past the outward attention grabbing scenes and you burrow more into the structure and you appreciate all the more how tightly wound and how well plotted tenebra is now uh, this is a spoiler free review and there is uh, no way i can uh, tell you more without ruining the pleasure of discovering Tenebra's uh, plot twists and resolution and revelation all by yourself. So if you're unfamiliar uh, with uh, Tenebra, just watch the film. Just watch the film and discover for yourself what it has to offer. But I'm not done here yet. I still have more praise to heap upon Tenebra. Yes, it's that good. There are times where I thought, okay, that's it. I've seen Tenebrae to death, I'm done with it. I've seen it in French, I've seen it in Italian, I've seen it in German, I've seen it in Russian, I've seen it in English, I've seen it on tape, I've seen it on DVD, I've seen it on Arrow Steelbook Blu-ray. Subtitles, no subtitles, all sorts. I've never seen it cut though, I, I, I've always seen it uncut, I believe. But Tenebrae keeps on giving and if you're a younger viewer, let me tell you, this is quite, this is a sign of something very, very special. If a film keeps on giving after years and years, it means it's definitely a real filmmaking. If there is more to it than meets the eye upon the first couple of viewings and Tenebrae is definitely one such film. Even though it's a shockingly violent film and can be traumatic for some viewers, I believe, it's nevertheless definitely got its merits and deserves to be watched and appreciated uh, and hopefully also discovered by uh, the younger generation of uh, viewers. On the thematic level, Tenebrae actually has a core, it has something there which isn't just all about uh, distracting you from the culprit, who the real culprit is. There is actually this uh, theme, this subject matter, this theme. Tenebrae, besides being a hell of a thriller and a violent one and a exciting, suspenseful tale, it's also an exploration of uh, human sexuality. 
sexuality in an urban setting and coming from the center, the heart of Catholicism, Rome, if you've been to the historic center there, it's church upon church. You can't walk 10 feet without bumping into a nun or a priest in the historic center, but none of that is seen in Tenebra. Yes, you see a cathedral early on in the background, but that's about it. So religion is such, it's, it's kind of... It's very important to the story. There is even a nice scene where the uh, protagonist, Peter Neal, has a chat with Cristiano Perti about how their Catholic upbringing has uh, formed and informed their uh, choices as adults. This scene really resonates once you've seen Tenebri a few times. You realize just how uh, this apparently relatively you know, throwaway dialogue is actually quite revealing and it, it's it shows you, again, the avenue of how you can look at Tenebre beyond just being a thriller, you know, with blood and set pieces. You can actually look at it as an exploration of uh, human yearnings and repressed type, types of uh, uh, repression and how society maybe forces uh, individuals to repress their uh, just who they are and how that can irrevocably twist and harm people and turn them into uh, dangerous individuals. I mean, you could, you could read that into this film, but it's up to you. You can, you can just enjoy it as a thriller with a nice clever twist, or you can look into it and see, and see that, okay, there is maybe even a message there about certain time, types of uh, traditions and fascism being extremely dangerous when they're being enforced violently upon uh, youth. Yes, there are those flashbacks. Oh my God, I'm not going to spoil them to you, but there are a couple of flashbacks which can be traumatic. Along with uh, Cat O' Nine Tales, I think Tenebrae has the, li the most likable uh, main character and cast of characters of any Dario Argento thriller. Now we have uh, Anthony Franciosa here as Peter Neal and he does a very, very good job elevating the character which may have been not as, not as three-dimensional on paper, which may come across as a dick and a narcissist and basically not a very likable guy. But uh, Franciosa does a good job uh, making sure that character is relatable. We do want to find out together with, with Peter Neal what's behind the murders and how they're connected to his work and to his uh, persona, actually. And that works. And again, there is a couple of cops in this film, Germani and Altieri. And they're extremely sympathetic and this is unusual because a lot of the time the cops, the bumbling cops or you know pontificating cops can be boring and this whole police procedural thing can be really the dullest part about many Jali. But not in Tenebrae. In Tenebrae I, I almost think uh, Germani and Altieri could have had their own spin-off film that would have been nice because they had such good uh, uh, chemistry going on there. Dari Nicolodi she has a fairly thankless part to play in Tenebrae, but nevertheless, she does a great job imbuing the, her character and with uh, a lot of uh, essential human values and qualities which make her an interesting character to follow. And we feel for her also in the key scenes where she's exposed to some terrors. And yeah, Anne is not the most flamboyant character Nicolodi got to play for Argento. She's not as uh, flamboyant as Gianna Bretz in Deep Red, for example. But she's more of a subtle and again more believable character, just uh, a woman who, who's basically written there to care for and look, look after the spoiled, narcissistic, creative male <laughs> protagonist. Murders in Tenebrae. Now, I'm not going to spoil who gets killed and how, let's just say the body count is pretty high. I think one of the highest in the Argento canon, barring his comedy Five Days of Milan, which has the highest body count of any uh, Dario Argento film. And there are some pretty nasty axe murders in Tenebrae. There is a particular one where a character has an axe planted in, in, in their head 
and they're screaming and then as they fall down they clutch it and pull the axe out of their head and this each time I watch it I just it just comes across so believable and realistic that the the, the axe you can see the axe come out the head and there is this blood spilling out the wound as the character falls to the ground it's pretty amazing but Tenebra is so much more than just effects I'm sure everyone has their own favorite murder set piece in Tenebra but that film it's just such a package you have the refined visuals and then there is this very very special uh, oral soundscape and it's all joined with a very nice nicely put together plot I really can't think of another uh, Giallo Italiana which is as successful at, at what it sets out to do as Tenebra is so I urge you to watch Tenebra if you've never seen it please do yourself a favor go and discover this wonderful uh, piece of filmmaking this video is coming to an end I'm just going to very quickly talk about my first discovery of Tenebrae many years ago so it's a goodbye from me thanks a lot for watching it's been a pleasure being able to share my love and appreciation for Tenebrae with you I remember Tenebrae getting under my skin even though I wasn't quite aware at the time as to why this incredible this European setting this incredible care put into the interior decoration the costumes and that very odd soundtrack that synthetic soundtrack I mean all of that just oh, I remember being quite over, overwhelmed by Tenebrae not really enjoying it but I watched it and my jaw was on the floor half the time because it was like something very alien in aesthetic and over the years I realized I kept coming closer and cro closer and closer and now watching Tenebrae is like coming home for me it's actually like become such a big uh, part of my uh, viewing habit Tenebrae now the way the killer goes about his business in Tenebrae it's incredibly methodical especially the early murders which are not pre which are not random which are 100% premeditated you can uh, see the care put into it and how the killer cases their victims and after he's done with them he actually takes a photo camera and takes some some shots of, of their bodies which end up being quite stylish visuals <laughs> somehow so there is that incredible maniacal care put into preparation execution and aftermath of the killing which again is fetishized beyond anything I've seen up to that point in cinema no, no American film has ever uh, shown such a methodical and obsessive way of uh, approaching uh, murder thank you very much for watching my appreciation of Tenebrae and in case I haven't convinced you yet please go and watch Tenebrae right now go watch Tenebrae